Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're checking out a couple of Raspberry Pi floor kits from our study. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Mars study sent me not one, but two different Raspberry Pi 4 kits for fair and honest reviews. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We'll take a look here at the very first kit. It contains a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, and it's the four gigabyte version. The first thing I see is an instruction manual. We've also got a red and white case. Inside this unmarked white box, we have some heat sinks and also a fan. The fan and heat sinks seem pretty standard. The screws for the fan are included right in the packaging as well. There's also a micro SD to USB-C card adapter, and these things are incredibly handy, especially for smartphones. We have not one, but two micro HDMI cables, and we'll take a look at those in more detail in just a second. We also have a power adapter. There's the Raspberry Pi 4 4GB of RAM version and also a micro SD card. This one is 64 gigs and it's a class 10. Now taking a closer look at the case here and the colors are very similar to the official Raspberry Pi case. On the left, we have the official Raspberry Pi case and on the right here, we have the Mars study case. The reds on the Mars study case are a little bit deeper but I'm also noticing a few more features, like the cutout for the GPIO pins. It's also worth pointing out that there's a slight difference in texture here for the plastic. I would argue that the Mars Study plastic is possibly not as high quality as the Raspberry Pi case plastic. Now placing the Pi 4 into this case, it fits easily, it fits snugly, and the holes seem to align absolutely perfectly. You can see here that the ports align very nicely, the HDMI and USB-C port as well as the headphone jack and the micro SD card port is also aligned great, and there's a ton of space here for the GPIO pins. Overall, I'm fairly happy with this case. There's space for a fan, tons of space for GPIO, and a lot of ventilation. This case is a very flexible case. Here's a closer look at the included micro HDMI cable. The black cable is the Mars Study cable, and the white cable here is an official Raspberry Pi cable. You can see the Raspberry Pi cable is a little bit thicker, and the head on this one is a little bit bigger. The Mars Study one by visual inspection here appears to be a little bit cheaper, but it's also longer. So the Raspberry Pi cable is a lot shorter. Truth be told, I would probably take the trade off here for the longer cable. Now checking out this power adapter and I was very pleasantly surprised. There's a bit here with a switch and it's completely optional. You can also apply it to different projects if you want. You don't necessarily have to use it on this setup and that's a huge thumbs up. The cable itself is very long and if you add the power switch to it, the cable gets even longer. So it's very generous in length overall from an HDMI cable standpoint and a power cable standpoint. And if you take a look at the adapter here, it's rated at five volt, 3.5 amp. For comparison, here's a Labest's Raspberry Pi cable. It comes in a different package altogether and this one is five volt, three amp. And here's the official Raspberry Pi brick rated at 5.1 volt and 3 amp. Now taking a look at the second package here, and this one does not include a Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 accessory kit. There is a power adapter, and the power adapter here is the exact same one that was in the other package. We've got our USB-C connector, a lengthy cable, and a power switch that's detachable. And for reference, this one's also rated at 5 volt, 3.5 amp. There's an included class 10 64 gigabyte micro SD card. We've got a screwdriver. This one is just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. We also have a micro SD to USB-C card reader. And again, this is great if you wanted to use micro SD cards in a cell phone or something like that. It's got multi-purposes. We've got goldish color heat sinks here. These are a little bit different than the black heat sinks in the other kit and less of them. There's also an included fan here and this one is rated at five volt 0.25 amp. On the right is the fan in this kit. On the left is the fan in the other kit. We've got two micro HDMI cables and I kind of like this. A lot of kits out there just ship with one. And last up here is the case. Now this case is a little bit different than the other one or a lot a bit different. To be honest with you here, some people really like these cases, but I'm not the biggest fan of them and I'll show you exactly why. To insert the Raspberry Pi, you've got to take the entire case apart and there are a bunch of different layers here. It's kind of like a deck of cards. Some people I've talked to think this is extremely cool. I find it a bit of a headache because the big problem here if you don't have an instruction manual is trying to fit all of these pieces back together. 
especially if you jumble them up. I mean, none of those case pieces have any sort of indication on them as to what number they are, but fortunately the instruction manual has a number for every single piece. And trust me here, even if you know what you're doing, setting this up and getting the Raspberry Pi situated does take quite a bit of time. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to take even longer considering the parts are labeled, but not necessarily corresponding to the position that they have to be in in order to set this up. I've put a ton of these cases together and always towards the end it's a bit of a struggle to line up the screws, make sure everything is a-okay. On the positive side though, there's space for a fan here, there's tons of space for your cables either out the top or out the side. There's plenty of airflow in this case, a lot of space for that pie to breathe. So as a quick recap, here's everything that was included in the first kit. What I liked about this was a lot. I like the Pi 4, obviously. Uh, the case for the Pi 4 wasn't too bad at all either. I like the fact that they included two micro HDMI cables and they were very long. Uh, the micro SD card reader is a big plus. A 64 gig class 10 micro SD card is okay. 64 gigs is great, it's just off-branded and I don't necessarily know if I trust it for long-term reliability. Uh, the fan isn't too bad, the heat sinks are pretty standard. And the power adapter here I actually really liked as well. It gives you the option to use the power switch or not. Now here is everything that was included in the second kit. And something to point out here, the image just shows one micro HDMI cable, but I got two. This second kit I'm a little bit more torn about. I do like the power adapter and the optional power switch on it. That gets a thumbs up. Not a big fan of the case. I don't like these layered cases, although some people do. Uh, heat sinks is nice, fan is nice. Uh, the micro SD card, again, it's off branded. I wouldn't necessarily trust this for anything overly important. Uh, the micro SD card reader gets a thumbs up as well. And that's really about it for this one. Now, before I show you the price of these kits, there is something I gotta preface this with. The Raspberry Pi 4 has gotten incredibly expensive. Prices have gone through the roof thanks to the whole, well, global situation. You can see here, the Raspberry Pi alone for Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte version is $155. They're not cheap. If you can actually find one for retail anywhere, they used to go for 55 bucks overall for the 4 gigabyte version, but good luck trying to find one. So here's the price of the second package we took a look at, and remember this does not include a Raspberry Pi. This one is priced at $60 overall, and for me, it's a pass. I mean, it does include some nice things, but I'm really not a big fan of this case at all. This case style I don't like. And it is an off-branded micro SD card. It's not a premium one you're getting. So if you think 60 bucks is worth it, then sure. But for me, this one is a pass. And here is the first kit we took a look at. This one does include a Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte version and it's priced at $199.99, so basically 200 bucks overall. Now, I'm not gonna lie here, I'm kind of torn on this package. I mean, if you can pick up a Pi 4 4 gigabyte version for 55 bucks, then this package isn't worth it at all. It's way too expensive. However, with the current state of things and the fact that there's a ton of other 4 gigabyte packages going for a lot more than this, well, the $199.99, so, 200 bucks becomes a little bit more attractive. So completely ignoring the price for a second here and looking at the kit on its own, if you have no idea what you're doing when it comes to setting up a Raspberry Pi and you're looking for a kit, well, the kit contents here aren't too bad at all. It can set you up pretty nicely. And if you don't need a Raspberry Pi, I would say possibly wait until prices come down, if they ever do. And if you desperately need a Raspberry Pi, well, at $199, so 200 bucks here, I mean, it's kind of under what the market is selling these things for right now, package included. Now, it is worth pointing out here that as far as I know, Mars Study is not scalping these pies. Again, as far as I know, they're also having to buy these pies at inflated prices in order to stick in their beginner's kits. It's a very unfortunate situation. High pie prices dictate high beginner kits. I never thought I'd see the day where the Raspberry Pi was priced so high. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about these Mars study kits in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about the current state of the Raspberry Pi in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.